I uh, I thank God for everybody that is uh, that is joining us joining us this evening. I believe that God's given me giving me a word to share with you that is going to bless your heart during this season, this challenging time. Um, the word that God has given me is His word is all powerful. His word, the word of God, is 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 all powerful. God has given His word. He sends His word to save us, uh, and so His word still saves us if we can. Get in his word and study his word. It still saves us, you know. So from from all harm, all hurt, all danger, if we can trust the word of God. Uh, I want to pray and then I want to go and get into the scriptures that God's given us. And I pray that, you know, you'll take these scriptures and, and, you'll, and you'll meditate on them and you'll, you'll allow them to be the strength and the power that God has ordained his word to be in our lives. Uh, against all the works of the enemy, against all the challenges of our own mind and our own flesh and our own circumstances. God's work can deliver us out of all of it. I mean, it's very powerful. So let us pray, Heavenly Father. We're going to pray for just, uh, just, just a take, give me a minute just to pray because I want to pray. Heavenly Father, right now we humble ourselves in the name of Jesus Christ and we give you the honor and we give you the glory and we give you the praise right now. And Father God, we know that we need you. We're very conscious that, that we need you in order to have life and to have it more abundantly. And so, Father God, we come to you very humble, just, just first acknowledging that we know we come short of your glory. We missed the mark and we ask that you'll forgive us for our sins and forgive us for our trespasses because we need you, Father, and we need the right, right relationship with you. We need to experience your presence and experience your love and experience your grace and your mercy. And so we know that sin is a separator and we all sin and come short of the glory of God, but you're so kind to us and you made a way out of that way. You said if we would confess, agree with you that what we are doing or what is coming forth through us is sin. And then and then you are faithful, Father God, to, to forgive us and not only to forgive us, but to cleanse us. And so, Father God, we're asking that you purge us. Even, even when we have not, when we don't have the right attitudes, when we have the bad dispositions, when we're, when our minds are not clear, when we're afraid and we're walking, walking throughout life in fear and and in defense, God, we still need you to help us. We need you to deliver us. We need you to set us free so that we can be in peace and we can experience the, the peace and the joy that you that you afforded us. Father, I ask that you, I lift up everyone that is on this conference line, that is on the on this on this website. And Father, I'm asking that you will bless, bless every home, encourage every heart, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father God, as we're going forth in the word, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus that that you will, you will prepare every ear to hear, touch it, touch every eye to see, and touch every heart to receive your word. Father, God, let it be you and not me. And I yield to you in the name of Jesus Christ because your word is so critical in this season. And so we need the anointing and we need the revelation of your word, Master. And so we'll yield it to you that you will bring forth the anointing and the revelation of your word in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to talk to you about God's word. God, God, God's word, is God, he's, he's got all power invested in his word. All power. And when, when God speaks, his words are binding. They are binding. It, it, his word is an unbreakable contract. Whatever God say, you can stand on it. You know, he means it. If we can, if I can fulfill my part of that contract, well, God has already fulfilled his. There's no failure in God. God doesn't have to back up. You know, he don't have to take his word back because he's God. If God speak it, then he brings it into existence because he's God. He always says exactly what he means. He never lies. He never lies. He never takes it back. I mean, I've seen where God, you know, have said, you know, I, you know, I repented of, of a thing, but 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 God is not a liar. Whatever God say will will come to pass. I mean, he's not a man that he could lie. So his word can be taken as full value, as full, not at, but as full value valuable enough to cause our lives to be exactly what God ordained them to be. Without his word, it cannot be. God's, in, in, in God's word, there is creative power. There's creative power. When you, when, you, when you speak God's word, you're literally manifesting or bringing forth something. And, I, and I'll read that. In God's word, is power to change circumstances and conditions. In God's word, there's power we have to speak. We have to spend more time speaking God's word than more than we do speaking the what the world is saying. 
uh, when, we, when we speak what God has spoken in faith, we have what God has promised. When we speak what God has spoken in faith, we have what God has promised. Get that in your spirit. When we speak what God, we cannot speak what other people have spoken and expect to have what God has promised. I was reading a scripture earlier today and, and the scripture was saying that God was, was upset with prophets who go and get other folks' prophecy and start speaking it as though he gave it to them. You know, man would do a lot of things for antics and attention and notoriety, but but you need to be genuine and real when it comes to God. Let me give that again. When we speak what God has spoken in faith, we have what God has promised. Mark chapter eleven verse twenty two. I want you to go there if you've got your if you've got your phones, you've got you've got your Bibles. However you go there, just let's just go there. Mark eleven twenty two, and Jesus answering, said unto them, have faith in God. Now, 23 is the one that I really want you to hear in 24. It says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he say shall come to pass, he shall, he shall have whatever he say. Well, see, in the beginning, what Jesus said was, he said, have faith in God. When you have faith in God, and you are speaking the oracles of God, then you shall have what you say. It's not just you can just randomly speak some crazy stuff and, <laughs> and have it. No. He's talking about those who have faith in God, who are committed to God, who are dedicated to God. We can, we can speak, and so we can speak to our circumstances. We can speak to our fear. We can speak to whatever they can, they're saying, you know, they're expecting so many deaths. The devil is a liar. I'm not expecting that many deaths. I'm not expecting any more deaths. You know, I'm just, that's what we do as believers. We speak the opposite of what man, man speaks. We rebuke the devil without, because we, we are in Christ and Christ is in us and the power of God is manifested in us. The power of God is invested in us as children of God to see and make a difference in the earth. Verse 24 says, Therefore I say unto you, what, thing, what, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall, you shall help them. Now, 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 this is where I think we get it twisted is that we leave out the part where Jesus initially said, have faith in God. We have to have faith in God. Now, having faith in God is having a full confidence that you want everything to go according to God's plan, that, that you're trusting the Holy Spirit to pray through you, that your mindset is in line with the mind of Christ, that your heart and your desires are in line with. Because if you notice, there are a lot of things that we speak, they don't come to pass. There's a reason. Because it must be God's word. See, when Jesus said this, the first thing he said before he said it, he said, have faith in God. Now, I want to go over into Hebrews, and I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to give you what he said there. In, in chapter 1, verse 3, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, he says, Uphold, the, upholding all things by the word of his power. God, God holds everything up by his word. When you can repeat what God, his word, it, when challenges are there, and you can repeat what God, let's say, for instance, if, if, if you don't feel well, let's just say you, and just say your ear hurt, just on the, on the ear look. I don't want to speak nothing, foolishness. And you say, you know what? I'm healed in the name of Jesus. You be healed. By the strength of Jesus Christ, you be healed. You be healed. Why are you, why are you saying, well, see, God's word have power in it. That's your medicine, you say. You be healed in the name of Jesus. You be healed. You Right now, by the strength of Jesus Christ, you, see, that's what he's talking about. He upholds everything with his word. Um, and, and, and even everything that he's put in place is held, upheld by his word. Psalms 89 and 34, my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone out of my, my lips. God said it can't be altered. When you connect, when we connect with God for real, it's nobody, it's nothing anybody can, now I'm not talking about when you connect with your own self and other people and all that. I'm talking about when you connect with God for real, God for real, God. Um, uh, now I want to go and, and, and I, want you to, I want you to look at this. For the word of God is quick. It's quick. It works. It, it happens. It works quick. But when it's his word and he said it, it's quick. It's quick. It's powerful. It's powerful. Nothing, nothing can stop. If it's God's word and he said it, it's going to come. Now, everything we say ain't God's word. Sometimes we'll say some stuff because we want it to be his word. We want, God to, we want God to help us and we want God to do what we need him to do. But a lot of times God doesn't do anything because 
God is trying to get us in a, move us in another direction, trying to get us in a sure place, get us on a sure foundation. And where we are is so shaky. So all we are conscious of is what we need, where we are. And God knows the problem is not what we need. The problem is where we are. So, so you, you know, he won't, he won't, he won't answer your prayer until he can move you or shift you or get you in a place where your, your life is more sure that you've got a foundation under you that uh, we have a foundation on us where we can stand against the works and the wiles of the devil. So, so the scripture says this, for the word of God is quick, it's powerful. It is. Nothing can really stand against God's word and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Watch this part now. Sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow. That, now, that's recreation. When you, it, it, the word of God have, have the ability to, to make us over again. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. In other words, the word of God, once you put it in you, uh, once I put it in me, we put it in us. It discerns the, the thoughts, uh, our thoughts, and it discerns the intent of our hearts. And then what it does is it discerns it and it identifies it to us. When you, let's say you're saying, I'm, you know, God, I'm standing on your word. I'm believing you for my family. I'm believing you for my, my financial resources. I'm believing you for my health. I'm believing, and I'm standing, God, I'm trusting you. Well, see, what God will do is he will discern your thoughts, your motives. It'll, it'll, the word of God discern. He'll, 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 and if you can get in his presence when it's not really happening, He'll let you know what your motives are and how your motives are a hindrance. See, sometimes we want the glory. We want the, you, God is not going to share his glory. You asking God to do something, you want to take glory? Want somebody pat? The Bible says, you know what? When you get a pat on the back, that's all you get. That's why he said do things in secret. When you pray, you need to pray for people in secret. For the word of God is quick as powerful and it's shoving it into his sword. That's over in Romans chapter, I mean, I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Uh, for the word of God is quick, it's powerful, it's sharpening the need to it, so it pissing even the, the dividing us under. The word of God gets down inside of us and makes us over. It begins to it, it begins to get things out of us that's not of God. Over in 2 Timothy chapter 3, I want you to go there. 2 Timothy chapter 3. That was Hebrews 4.12 I just, I just gave you. I want you to study that. Hebrews 4.12. This is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Um, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration. It's inspired by God. The Holy Spirit has always been here, inspiring and keeping God's word. Even though, you know, he used men, women to write, but the inspiration, what, what, what authenticated as God's word is the Holy Spirit. God's word is inspired by the Holy it's, it's God's word is God. And when it's really God's word, it works. You, you know, and, 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 it's, and, and, and there's so much competition with with the flesh and the spirit, the our flesh, our natural being, competes with the Holy Spirit who indwells us. You know, it wants the it wants the glory. It wants the you know it wants the power. It wants that. It wants to it wants to the, the, the pat on the back. It wants the acknowledgement. But let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. When you apply God's word to people's lives, and you immediately start giving Him the glory, you don't have to tell people. You know, you don't have to get in no deep. Oh no, God gets the glory. Okay. No, no, keep your mind on God so it can keep working whatever you've seen work. So the healing can stay. So the deliverance can stay. So the, so the, so the difference can stay. The change in their lives can stay. Don't, don't pay them any attention when they start saying, oh, you prayed. Oh, you had a word. Oh, then you're going to kill it. You're gonna, you're gonna, because what you're doing is you're stepping in. See that? It's a process. When, when, you, when we use God's word, it's a process. And, and the process is it needs to remain you know, that the as soon as God's word go for every ungodly thing that can happen will happen to, to fight that word. And so if God used you to, to speak a word or to pray a word, you need to back up and get out of God's way. That's why he said you pray to men in secret. I reward you openly. God's word worked, but some it'll start. I've seen it. I've seen I was at a I was at a crusade one time. And there was a woman who had gotten fully healed. She had gotten healed. She had gotten healed. And uh, she and she had gotten healed by the word of God, healed, fully healed. She was sick and was in a wheelchair, and she had debilitating, um, um, had a debilitating disease, and she couldn't, she couldn't walk. And then, then the man of God prayed for her. He prayed for her. She got healed. God healed her. You saw she got up out the wheelchair, 
She went back to her hometown and she began to listen to the words that the people were saying. When God give you a word, don't let people who don't believe that they didn't hear God. You heard God. You want them to you want them to validate something they didn't even hear. I don't know why they just talking against you. Shouldn't have told them. Don't tell them. Just don't tell them. <laughs> don't tell them. Because see, let it come to pass first. Well, that's my mama. I know it's your mama, but still, her faith might not be where your faith is. It don't mean you don't love her. You just don't need to tell her. <laughs> that ain't easy to hear, is it? But it's true. That's my husband you're talking about. Yeah, I am talking. But you still, you don't need to tell him. If his faith ain't there, you gotta, you, you have to trust God to, to, to auction you who to tell him. So you just know sometimes need to be quiet and stand on that. When you're believing, when you're believing God to work in your family, do a miracle, you, sometimes you don't need to tell anybody. You know, you just need to be quiet and keep it to yourself. Until you see, and then when you see God doing it, don't go pat the person on the back like they did it. Don't, don't lift them up like, no, you go back on your face and say, God, thank you for the words you gave me in that situation under those circumstances. God, I bless you. I glorify you. I worship you. Your word works. That's when you'll see it remain. You'll see it remain. It's something else when we use the word of God and it don't remain. It don't let you see a miracle happen because you, you, you believed God and you took him at his word and you began to speak that word. And then, and then you see something happening. A wrong move can, can throw it off because the, the, Satan is a very real adversary. You have to be, the Bible says you have to be sharp as a serpent. And humble humility says, God is doing whatever miracles I'm seeing in my life, whatever blessings I'm seeing in my life, it's because of God. And I give him the glory. Let me give you some more scriptures because you need, we need these to, to stand on so we can, as life move forward and we're, she, we're shifting, we're shifting now. Uh, 2 Timothy, I, I told you 2 Timothy. Let me, let me give you that again. Let me read it. Verse, chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. It says, All scripture is given for, by inspiration of God and is profitable for, for, for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in, in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Uh, Psalms, one, I mean, 119 and verse 105. Psalms 119 and verse 105 says, The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We, 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 we're talking about God leading us and guiding us into this, going back into the sanctuary. And so we read that this morning. But, but his word can, can really, if you, you put God's word, let's say you get up in the morning and you put God's word and you put God first on the agenda. God, God's word can lighten up the path that you should take. It can lighten up the path that you can. You always want to know, like, God, which way should I go? What should I do today? Well, you don't have to ask those questions because, because it'll, it'll lighten it. The, the path that you should take is lighter, is brighter. You got to hear that by the Spirit. That's why how powerful God's Word is. It'll, it'll start helping you to find your way where you've been stumbling, you know, why I can't get this? Why my life ain't coming together? Why? Well, get God's Word in you. Humble yourself and listen to it and meditate and submit to it. Do God's Word. Don't. Don't just be a hearer. Um, I want to give you this. Uh, and here it is, James chapter 1, verse 22. St. James chapter 1, verse 22. Um, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. A lot of times people will get the word in us and we want to go prove to somebody we learned the scripture. It ain't doing us no good. You have to get this. When you get a word from God, a scripture from God, you have to let that word get inside of you and do a work. You don't have to prove anything to anybody. They'll see it when you can live better and you can take care of yourself and you can support. They'll see it. When you can, when, you, when, when life has gotten better, they'll be like, what the world did you do? And you say, well, you know what? I just got on God's word, stood on God's word and allowed it to do what it do. And that's what, that's what it takes. That's what it takes. Let me, let me do Psalms 119 and 9. I'm going to do a couple of more and then we're done. Psalms 119 and 9. Where, where, where with all? Shall a young man cleanse his way? How can I how can I get myself together? How can I fix myself? How can I how can I clean? By taking heed thereto according to God's word. You this is you, God's word have the ability, no matter what you I remember when I was young, man, 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 my God. I, I talked to my wife about this a lot. I said, What do you think about now? She said, Oh, it's a miracle. I said, Did you ever think? She said, No. She, she don't even play with it. Because God get the glory. I mean, he, he, turned, he turned my life around, man. God is amazing. 
It can change life. I don't care what you're into. You know, life can be real confusing, especially when you're born up on a lot of stuff and a lot of th things already in the family that you didn't even know. A lot of things you sort of look over and you don't want it to hit your life, but it's hit your life. God can fix all of that. He, but with this word, he'll do it. So I'm praying for that, for you, that God will turn your life. Somebody right now needs this. I'm praying that God will turn your life around, but you got to cooperate with him. I'm praying God will help you. God will help you because he can. I'm pr praying that prayer now. That God will bless you. He'll bless you. He'll help you. There, there are some people you're wondering. You're having some challenges and you're wondering. Well, well, the word of God is what you need. You need to ask God to give you his word, to help you, to receive his word. Because I, I know a lot of times we as parents, we, we're concerned about our children. We're going to do different. But I tell you, one thing I've learned is I must pray for my children and let them live the lives they live and encourage them every chance I get. But God, they need God more than they need me. Trust me, because I know where they come from, and I know the opposition that's in their lives. And so I know that the only somebody could fix me, because a lot of times when we, 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 we've gotten our life together a little bit and we're doing a little better, we think we've done something. But let me share something with you, brothers. So it's the same God that fixed you and helped you. The same one can help your children and the people you love and the people you're concerned about. You can't, you can't do it. I can't do it. You know, you, we, we, he's the only one that can, that, can, that, can, that can do it. So you have to give what you love to God, you know, and then you have to be willing to, to leave it there until God bring it back and then, and then give him the glory every time you see it doing good. Uh, uh, Luke chapter, chapter 11, verse 28. Luke chapter 11, verse 28 says this, but he said, yeah, rather, blessed are they that hear the word and keep it. So you have to keep it. It's not a matter of, 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 of impressing somebody. You know, uh, you want to be delivered. If you got a problem, you got some things going on in your life, you need to deliver. Meditate on to keep to keep God's word means to meditate, to eat it, to think about what He said, to to let Him give you revelation, knowledge on it, to let God be clear. Ask God, say, God, make it plain, make it plain, make it plain, make it plain. Let me let me give you let me give you something else. Isaiah chapter forty verse eight: The grass withereth, the flower fadeth. But the word of our God shall stand forever. Let me tell you this, brothers and sisters. This is, um, let me give you something that I think is very critical right now. The word of God was sent by God to help us, to make our lives better. We have to make adjustments. We have to make changes. And sometimes we don't know what they are. We have to be safe. We have to be protected. Sometimes we don't know what to do. We don't know where to go, which way to go. But let me say this to you. Hear me very carefully. You can trust God to lead you. You can trust God to protect you. You can trust God to keep you. But his word, the word needs to be coming out of your mouth. It needs to be running through your head. It needs to be running through your heart consistently. However you can get God's word, get it. If you, if you have to do it on, on one of your apps on your phone, get it on the TV, especially when you're weak and you're in sin and you can't stop sinning. The sin ain't got too good. <laughs> Sometimes sin can get good, can it? Well, listen, you don't need to be sinning. Sin can, sin can hurt you. When, when it's got real good and you sin, this is what you do. You go to God's word. Now, don't, don't talk to your sinning partner and try to get them to study with you. <laughs> you got to trust God and get alone and let him do this for you. He can help you. I love you. I thank God for you. I tell you, during this time, please be encouraged. I'm asking God to, to give you the word, to impart it into you, to give you the revelation of it. We need it. We need the revelation. We need God to reveal it to us. So I'm asking God to do that for you. I'm asking, I'm asking God to keep you. I'm asking God to order your steps. I'm asking God to give you wisdom instantly. Which direction to go? What to be mindful of? And, 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 and I know you're in agreement with that, so we trust God to, to do it. I'm praying that you're saved. I'm praying that Jesus Christ is the Lord of your life. And if he's not the Lord of your life, then here's a time that you can make him the Lord of your life. How do I do that? Well, you ask God to forgive you for your sins. Say, so, so God, I need you to forgive me for my sins and my trespasses. You might not fully understand, but, but, but get it. And then now you need God to help you. God can really, Jesus said, no man come to me except the Father draw him. And, and, and no man can go to the Father except I take him. So you ask God to forgive you for your sins. And then you say, Jesus, I really need you to be my Lord. I need you to be my Savior. Come into my life, my whole life, and just, just manage my life from this day forward. With my mouth, since I've asked you to come in, Jesus, I believe you have. With my mouth, I confess that you are the Lord of my life. And I believe, God, that you raised Jesus from the dead. Therefore, 
with my faith in him, I have eternal life. Now trust God to, to help you. Ask God to baptize. I'm asking God right now to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. If you've done that, it's the first time you need to be baptized. You need a church home. Ask God where to go. And I'm trusting that God will lead you. Now, brothers and sisters, this is a time that we normally do our offering. And you can give tonight. I want you to give. I'm sure that you can look right on, if you're, however you're watching, it's there. And I want you to give tonight. But I want you to give trust in God. I don't want you to give in, in, in bondage. I want you to give the tr just, just being in obedience to God, that God is the tithe are holy and they belong to God. And that whatever, he said, bring the tithe and the offering. And so you be obedient, then you trust his word. He said, I'll, he said, I'll open the windows of heaven. He's ordained men to give unto your bosom. God has, has, he's responsible. Once you give him the 10, he takes responsibility for the 90% that you got left. Be obedient to God and God will bless you. Hey, be blessed in Christ Jesus. I love you. I thank God for you. And again, we'll talk again on Sunday. You come back on Sunday. God bless you.